I should have peed first. I'm so excited. I am so excited, mostly to get to perform here in LA, my home. I love this city. It's so exciting. My one beef with LA is that it is a driving city, and when I moved here, I had to start driving for the very first time, and boy, am I bad at it. Uh, it is rough, and when you're a bad driver with this face, it's a real nightmare, let me tell you. It is. No fun, I feel like I've seen every version of, of course, face in LA. And I don't appreciate that face. I don't appreciate that face one bit. Every time I see it, I just wanna roll down my window and be like, excuse me, sir. No, 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 I'm not a bad driver because I'm Asian. I'm a bad driver because I won't wear my glasses and I text, okay? <laughs> it's a personal choice. I don't wanna be good at this. I will die in my Nissan Sentra. <laughs> It's just, driving is so hard, you know? Like, there's so many places you're supposed to look, and <laughs> I can't be bothered. I've just got cooler stuff going on up here, you know? I, I won't. I love LA. The people here are wild, though. You guys care about a lot of things that I don't care about. Uh, recently, I got in trouble in my own home for trying to kill a spider. My friend uh, was like, no, Joel, if you spare the creature, it will kill the other bugs in your apartment. And I was like, well, that seems worse. I don't want to work from within the bug community to get rid of the bugs, you know? Like, it's so nefarious. Like, what am I, a member of the Reagan administration? You know, like, terrible, okay. I'm so glad some of you understood that joke, because I didn't. Um, I'm very stupid, you see, but I own it. I find a lot of people these days don't own their stupidity. Like, I am constantly having to end conversations with my friends by being like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't think either of us read enough books to be talking about this, okay? Like, why are we arguing about the estate tax? You're a dog walker and I'm a musical theater major. <laughs> Tough. I was raised in a very stupid community, so I don't really like to go home very often anymore. The only reason I do go home is because my older sister, she still lives there, and she started having babies, and I love being an uncle, and I love spending time with them and just sort of soaking up all the Instagram engagement that I can while they're young. Um, <laughs> I also think it's really important to spend time with them because I don't think that kids are in the cards for me personally. Like, don't get me wrong, I think it's so great that there are so many gay dads in the country. Give it up for gay dads. Um, but I also think it's wrong. I do. Um, and, and that was a trap, and you fell for it. So here's the thing, is that I believe that gay men, we were put here as population control, and I think every time God above sees two gorgeous men raising a child, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. You have misunderstood the assignment. Uh, and it must be so frustrating for him because we're so much better at it, you know? Like, just put yourself in his shoes for a second. Like, you've got this national park, and it is overrun with deer. So you release some wolves into the neighborhood to get rid of some of the deer, and then the wolves start raising high-functioning deer, you know? <laughs> oh my God, they named that deer Atticus, and they've opened up a Montessori school! <laughs> it's out of control! I, I clearly, I don't actually believe that I'm joking, although my dad did have two sons, and they both turned out gay, and I don't think there's a clearer sign from God that he is done with this bloodline, you know? <laughs> it's just... Had enough boosters for one generation. Thank you. <laughs> the real reason I think I won't be having kids anytime soon is that I am very, very single. Stop freaking out. Um, <laughs> it's, it's all right, though. I'm, I'm out there. I'm on all the apps in LA. Right now, my apartment is just a revolving door of strangers. And uh, <laughs> that's fine for me. Some of my friends are a little concerned. They're like, Joel, you don't know these people. Like, aren't you worried that one of them could murder you? And it's like, yeah, that's a pretty big draw for me, honestly. <laughs> like, because my thing is, if I've been murdered, I've still been picked, you know? And that, ultimately, <laughs> is the point of dating. Either way, I get to stop, you know? And what a relief. I recently went on a pretty promising first date, though. Uh, he took me to a Mexican restaurant here in LA that had something I had never experienced before. It had table-side guacamole. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's just a little cart that your server rolls up next to the table, and they make the guacamole right there in front of you. And I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand why we're pulling back the curtain on guacamole, you know? It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why here? Why now? There's no theater to guacamole. It's not an interesting process. In fact, it's kind of a distraction. I'm sitting there across from my date trying to walk him through my student loan debt. Meanwhile, <laughs> Danielle can't get the pit out of the avocado. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> there's no mystery there either, Danielle. We all know how 
guacamole is made. Of all the things to bring back out of the kitchen and reveal to us before our very eyes why the guacamole, here's an idea, Danielle. Bring out the lava cake and show me how you got the lava in there! <laughs> So, long story short, I did not get a second date. Uh, you guys have been so fantastic. I'm Joel Kimbuster. Have a great night.